Here we have an example of exponentials. Where we're going to use compound interest. Compound interest is where you pay interest on your interest. Uh, the important thing about when you use the compound interest formula, P is the principal you put in. So P for principal, that's the amount of money you're going to be working with. Uh, R is your interest rate as a decimal. So if it's like 5%, it'd be 0 0.05. N is the number of times you compound it per year. So if you compounded something quarterly, that N would be 4. If you compound something monthly, it would be 12, and so on. And then T is always measured in years. So if you have like 1.5 years, then T would be 1.5. That was a bad example. Uh, if you have like 6 months, then T would be 1 half. It's measured in years. So let's apply that to our problem here. It says... Mrs. Salzman invested $2,000 into an educational account for her daughter when she was an infant. The account has a 5% interest rate. If Mrs. Salzman does not make any other deposits or withdrawals, what will be the account in the balance after 18 years if the interest is compounded quarterly? In other words, how much money is she going to have? Um, I'm guessing this would be for, like, yeah, for her college tuition or a tech school, but for post-secondary, where you gotta, where you have to pay some. So uh, my formula is A equals P times one plus R over N raised to the NT power. Now let's put that in terms. P in this problem is gonna be 2,000 because that's the, how much money she's put in the bank, okay? R is my interest rate, so that'll be 0.05. Uh, N, it's compounded quarterly, so N is 4. And then T is the number of years she's going to put it in, which is 18. So now let's just replace those numbers in our formula. So I'm going to say 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4 raised to the 4 times 18. And that's what we're going to do. So let's, uh, let's use our calculator to do this. To simplify it a little bit, I'm going to use uh, just the, gra uh, the scientific calculator because I don't need to do any graphing on this one. So I want to take 2,000 and then parentheses, I'm going to say 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4. Whoops, forgot my division sign there. Divided by 4. And I'm going to raise that, I'll have to put it in parentheses because I'm going to do two things. Raise that to the 4, whoops, my parentheses didn't show up. 4 times 18 power. So she's going to more than double her money. She's going to get $4,891.84. So $4,891.84. Now let's compare that to same type of problem, only this time it's compounded monthly. So the only thing that's going to change is N is going to be 12. Everything else is going to be the same. So I'm going to say 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12 raised to the 12 times 18 power. That's the nice thing about the graphing calculator. I can go back in here. I'm going to ch just change my 4 to 12 in both spots. And notice she gets a little bit more money, obviously because she's paying, getting a little more interest. So $4,910.02. But really not that much more, is it? And let's compare that to, let's say she does it compounded daily. So the only thing that's going to change on this one in N is going to be 365. So we're going to say 2,000 
times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 365 times 365 times 18, or up to, raised to that power, I should say. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to change my 12 to 365. Ooh. So $4,918.90. So $4,918.90. So moral of the story, compound it as, as often as you can. Notice, not that much difference, though, is it, between compounded daily and compounded monthly.